Last time on MJ Sailing. We made the 70 mile sail from Antigua to the volcanic island of Ceiba and spent an amazing day ashore exploring the villages resting within its peaks. And also climbed to the top of Mount Scenery, the highest point in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Sable probably just ruined my uh, camera. camera now too. Big splash. It's been a bad morning. So this the anchorage here, or the mooring field, is one of the windiest places we've ever seen. Unfortunately, we don't have the wind gauge yet, so we still can't tell exactly what it is. But it was so incredibly strong. When we were trying to raise the dinghy, it acted as a kite and flew behind us. We didn't have a tether on it like we should have, but. Uh, it flew behind us, went over a solar panel, was probably 30 feet in the air, flapping around behind us. Uh, the, the painter for it wrapped around the wind generator, broke the cone for the wind generator. Our solar panels on top of the bimini uh, busted loose and the, the flexible solar panels busted loose. One of them went into the wind generator and cracked that. So. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of wind issues here, but that's learning because we're going to go to an area where it's going to be high winds almost all the time, so we better get used to this. Again, learning, but it was, it was pretty bad in there. <laughs> um, beautiful island, mooring field sucks. Uh, and now we're on our way to St. Martin. Now we're on our way to St. Martin. Uh, winds pretty high right now. We're under just staysail and two reefs in the main. Still sunny and beautiful though. Yeah. Uh, so we got that going for us. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Yep, so and now we got a salty uh, camera. Salty camera, which I'm going to yeah. go fix right now. Yeah. Knowing this was supposedly our last sail where we could not sit in the cockpit without getting soaked at some point, we had to smile through the splashes. Knowing our next destination meant the completion of our Dodger project and hopefully protected passages from here on out. The winds were not going to make it easy on us though. Having a sail close hauled in 20 to 25 knots while pounding through two meter waves on our front quarter. But if anything, it was only motivation to work hard and fast so we would not be sailing our next 2,500 miles with an exposed cockpit. After spending one night out in Simpson Bay, it was time to move ourselves into the protection of the lagoon even though we had mentioned before this was not our favorite spot to be. Today has been unbelievably rolly here in the Anchorage and Simpson Bay. Um, and I know you're probably asking why don't you just go in the lagoon because we're stubborn and we don't want to go in the lagoon. Uh, for us it's just, I don't know, <sighs> claustrophobic I guess. I don't know why, but we prefer to be out here in the bay. It was necessary to pop into the lagoon to have a calm environment to finish our Dodger project, but also because we'd be leaving the boat for 10 days to fly back home to Michigan for my brother's memorial service. Luckily, our friends Bill and Grace would be anchored next to us, not only to keep an eye on our boat, but also to take Georgie off our hands. 
so we've been back for a little over 20 hours now. We haven't quite unpacked. We've just taken everything out of our bags and said. Well, that's unpacking. It's just not putting it away. That's true. Yeah. So what we came back with were, I got a new grinder. I got uh, some basic boat stuff, a new Windex for the top of the mast. Um, but the important things, our Atlantic crossing, we anticipate our food usage based on our other crossings. Um, one time we basically just ate cereal the entire way. Uh, this time I think we're probably just gonna eat cereal and UHT milk and trail mix. My favorite, this is my go-to snack and dinner and lunch and breakfast. So we got a bunch of trail mix that we came back with, Snickers, chocolate, but we we have no actual edible food for us to eat right now while we're still here because we emptied out the fridge before we left. Um, so now it's a mission kind of to go to town for, for a little groceries. bit for grocery run. Them. Yeah, we do need to do a grocery run. We need meat, we need lots of meat uh, and, and other stuff to survive us for the next couple of days until we're actually able to do our big provisioning run. We're actually going. I, I think we're going to rent a car at this point. Um, to do a run, we can then see the island a little bit more and uh, go and get all the groceries that we need for upcoming crossing. Let's go vision. So we are back to island life now after our quick trip home to Michigan. And uh, it's so weird with about a week, week and a half, we can already tell the difference that summer is getting into full swing here. It was actually kind of chilly sometimes before we left, but now the breezes are starting to die out more and that hot Caribbean sun just really pounds on you. So. Uh, <laughs> This walk that we're doing now is already slowing us down a bit from the last time we've done it, but um, even though we're both looking forward to getting north and in cool climates, I know that I have to enjoy my last taste of the Caribbean and the heat and all of it. While we still have it, oh, just lost a shoe. Eh. So, it's hot, sticky, sweaty, gross. I'm gonna miss it. I actually managed to get everything I put on my long list I made this morning except for makings for chili cheese dogs which I'm guessing all of you are pretty happy about because from what we found out in the past you don't like it when we eat chili cheese dogs it's not good for us natural German cheese nacho German cheese no natural oh. not nacho nacho was more fun nacho German cheese and then my favorite section the cold drinks to go. Get a nice little Corona for the walk home. We'll see. Is the top of drinks gonna fall out? No, nope, you're good. Uh. Don't break your back now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what did our weekly groceries set us back today? 52 US. That's not bad. Like we're getting another salvage boat or catamaran by us. Um, it's weird the things just kind of like pop up here or disappear. When we were here a month ago over by Island Water World, it seems like there were a lot more derelict boats that were waiting on insurance to come through before they could do anything, and then they're gone. But all of a sudden, on this side, uh, like they just get dropped up. off. Oh, hold on. Well, the thing is pushing it. But the good news is when you see a boat like that getting dropped off instead of just kind of like shoved off in the corner is that there is hope that it's going to be brought back to life. So that one looks like it needs good cleaning, some new rigging, um, but hopefully, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take. Don't <laughs> no, ask us how long no, it no, takes. No, 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 that one is, that one needs everything. It's sunk. So the entire interior is ruined, Jess, and mm. the engines, electrical, everything. You can see that they'll sunk all the way up to the cabin top. Ah. 
why there's more. Uh, there, there is, but it's you're you're buying a new boat, or you're buying just a barrel hull, and hope that there's no water intrusion inside the hull. So as we sit here in St. Martin getting ready for our Atlanta crossing, we realize that there is absolutely no way that we're going to get our Todger finished. And there's also no way we're going to do another passage without some kind of protection in the cockpit. We've done it too many times. Um, if you saw the video when we were coming back from Saba, like we just got soaked. And I am not doing that for like 2,500 miles across the ocean. So um, we've come up with a temporary plan right now. We're going to um, get parts of the Dodger ready, but instead of putting our um, Stratoglass, which is going to be the final um, vinyl, final vinyl, <laughs> final vinyl, final vinyl for it. <laughs> when we were back in Michigan, we picked up some vinyl that is uh, 20 mil, five yards of it at 54 inches uh, for $32, and it's clear on both sides. It's got UV protection, so that is going to be our temporary well, cockpit protection as we cross over to the uh, Azores and over to Ireland when we can finally stop running and sit and work on projects. We'll see. Hopefully it'll be cooler there too. Anyway, that is what one of the things is that we have to tick off our list before we go across. Um, so let's get started on that and hopefully, hopefully it's a smooth project. They never are, but one can wish. all the salt off the underside of this. Yeah, amazing what up. builds under there when there's no protection. <laughs> oh, and I picked a dust to be standing downwind. <laughs> so wiping off the salt that has been building up uh, underneath. Take a look at that. There's some big chunks yeah. of salt there. Underneath the Dodger, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. So as you can imagine, majority of that was actually splashing on us, splashing on our beautiful sporta seats uh, in the cockpit, just a nasty type of thing. So today is going to be day number, what, 212 of working with the Dodger, Very something nice. like that. Uh, spent a lot of time on this thing so far. So what we're doing now is we're going to caulk uh, this seam. If you look, when we bent this, uh, track we actually were able to bend it for majority of the curve we were there's certain areas where we just weren't able to get it really tight around here you can see that now that will allow water to go through but most importantly it it looks bad uh, for us that is the detail is making it look good so we will be going through and caulking this um, filling in that gap in doing that before we start doing the next stage so that's a project. We do need to do the same thing that we did with the bottom part. I need to sand the back of the PVC. I need a flame uh, across to clean it up. We'll, we'll hit it with acetone as well, get it as clean as possible to try to get some of the adhesive strength of the um, Sika Flex just to try to give it a little bit more strength there. Right now it's held into place with screws. Issue with that is um, it's a foam core behind it. I did not go solid in that area, so it's actually just foam with two layers of light fiberglass in it. So there's not a lot of strength with that for pulling screws out. Um, so this will help adhere it a little bit better. To prep the PVC track before it was adhered, we wiped it down with acetone, sanded the surface for grip, and then did a flame treatment. Working together, Matt would add the Sika Flex, and then we align the track into its permanent place. I held it steady while Matt added the stainless steel screws. Then, we just used WD-40 to clean up the overflow. If we take a look here, we can see Matt not doing work. Matt just sitting around, playing around on the internet. <laughs> We're still checking weather for our departure, but... Sure, that's what I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> Not looking at news or anything. No. 
before we can leave, we still have to finish this Dodger project. So yesterday we had gone through and we filled in all this area. We 50, or I'm sorry, we a flexed this onto the hard Dodger and we put the screws back in. So now it has screws and caulk in there holding it. And we try to clean it up the best we can. And right now we've just gone ahead and put the fabric back in, slid it in there. And we also put the fabric down here on the bottom track. And if you can tell, this area is not very pretty right now because we just chopped off those blocks that were here. I uh, had to sand them down and to cover it with like an Aluma Prep and Inner Protect, but it'll get Kiwi gripped one day when we have time. So here is our track going down around the bottom, track going around the top. So back here, Matt has pulled out our uh, temporary, somewhat cheaper, Vinyl. Beautiful, high quality stuff. No, it's not, but <laughs> it'll get us to Ireland and the UK, hopefully. Yes. But uh, five yards of it should be enough. Yeah, we're gonna do a kind of like rough cut of it now, pin it onto the fabric, and then we're going to stitch it on with a like speedy all, is that what it's called? Speedy, speedy stitch. Speedy stitch, yeah. sewing all, same thing. So let's get the next step. The nice part about this too is it's going to make good templates when we do actually do the proper Stratoglass um, in Fabric Dodger. This will be good template material then, so we'll have everything marked. Hopefully it doesn't stretch too much, but uh, we can always edit that when we are ready to cut it. This real stuff down, we can then mark it and go from there. Well, we've got one side partially done. Doesn't it look beautiful? Hopefully you don't even know it's there. But we can tell from inside because it's really hot already with the sun beating through. Um, so right now we just like really loosely kind of cut the top parts here. This isn't the final cut, just enough to get the excess out of the way while we stitched it. And then um, we did about five stitches in a row every six inches. And we would alternate kind of between the top and the bottom. And also did a little work on the sides kind of focused in on this corner here because we knew that by pulling it that way it would help us eventually get it more that way on that corner and that way going forward. And here is where it has ended right now but soon we'll be cutting a seam kind of going down the front here and then just doing one wide one across the front. But that is part one and so far we should be a little bit protected from any waves that come from the east. Even though this was only a temporary enclosure to last us until we found our wintering over spot in Europe, where we could really sit down and get time-consuming projects done, we wanted to make sure we were doing the best cheap version possible. With each of us seated on one side of the vinyl, one person would pull the material taut as the other used a palm press to push the needle and thread through the vinyl and bolt rope to the other side, where the process would be repeated back and forth. The rounded corners of the front made it a little trickier and we were worried about slight ripples. But in the end, we were able to get a tight fit that was going to keep the wind and water out and surprisingly give us better visibility than we could have hoped for with the cheap material we were using. Join us for the next episode of MJ Sailing, where we do a large round of provisioning to prepare for our Atlantic crossing, and use our rental car to investigate parts of St. Martin we had not seen. After a few more preparations, it was one last round of drinks with friends before we get ready to sail towards Europe. <laughs>